One moment, please. And we're here. And we're here. Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and on Quilting with Nancy. Yeah, that's the other name. Sometimes I even forget that. Sorry about last time. We had scheduled this for, I think it was last Thursday, and literally our entire neighborhood lost internet for, I don't know, eight hours or something like that. We tried doing it on cellular which doesn't work very well in my basement studio. So there you go. That's what happened. So hopefully you can hear and see me now without any delays. I think, let's see, am I going to be able to see this? Although I don't know if I have the volume turned down. Let me see. Uh, hi from Kentucky. There we go. Volume down. Skip survey. There we go. We're all here. So hello to Brenda and Janice and Georgia and Janice and Georgia. Oh, London. Yeah. Wow. Hi from London. So want to talk to you today about tote bags. Um, I'm going to cover a little bit about doing the tote bags and answer a few member questions. People had some other questions about things. And I think actually in the process of doing this, the questions will be answered. So this is the tote bag. So this is a tote bag from, it's called Tourist Tote Bag. Right now, I don't remember who it's by, by So Many Creations NY. So they must be in New York City. So So Many Creations, their website is So Many Creations, S-E-W, Many Creations, NY.com. So if you're interested in the pattern and the kit, you want to go to firesidequilts.com. Laura's got all the product there. The kit is there. The pattern is there. Everything is there that you need to make this tote except one. Th no, actually, maybe there is. She wasn't sure she could get zippers because since the pandemic, there's been a lot of different things that have not been available. So Laura at first didn't think she could get zippers, but I believe that she even got some zippers. So I'll talk to you about what you can do with or without zippers. So this is the tote bag that we're gonna make. This is what it's gonna look like. This is what the kit is with the owl, the green, the teal at the bottom, and then this really cool fabric on the inside. And the reason I want to talk to you about tote bags or what I want to talk to you about tote bags about is a couple of really, really simple additions that you can make to any tote bag that'll make it better. Now, I got to say, this pattern, really easy to follow. They did a wonderful job writing the pattern. Everything worked out great. But I've got a couple little things that not only can you add to this tote bag, but you can add to every other tote bag. So first of all, in this tote, the instructions, they have you use Decker Bond, which is a heavy weight fusible interfacing. Um, I've actually got bolts of that. So if you're interested, if you can't find it anyplace else, let me know. Um, but generally speaking, that's something that you're going to find at any like a Joann's, honestly, a craft store like that, because it's more of a home deck item. Okay. The other, and so that's what they used, but a better option is this. This is called soft and stable. This rocks. Now let me show you an example of the difference. This is a tote bag I made quite a few years ago before soft and stable was around. It's got a cotton batting and an interfacing in it. And so when you hold it up like this, it goes like that and just kind of flops. Now this pattern was a pattern from Amy Butler. I loved her patterns. I mean, you gotta admit, this purse is really, really cute, but her patterns were beyond difficult to understand. Something about them, and if you'd never made a tote bag before, this was not the tote bag that you wanted to make. They were very difficult. And a couple of changes I made to this tote bag we're making the sleet, the handle a little bit longer. I want a handle that when I pick up the tote bag or purse, I can just slip it over my shoulder. So that means that's one adjustment that you're going to want to make to your tote bags, being able to put it over your arm instead of having to like get the extra arm out. You know what I mean? The second thing that I did on this, and this is something that I'll teach you how to do, is I put in a zipper. This bag had no zipper on it, and I create, there's this really simple technique I'm going to show you for putting a zipper in that bag. Now, this one did have, although I realized my zipper just broke. Wait a minute. There it is. Is it working? Nope. My zipper is broken on this one. I forgot. Yep. I do have to fix that. And the pockets, I believe she had pockets in it, but if she didn't, that's okay. I'll teach you how to do that too. 
Another tote bag that I did and I made changes to was this one. I don't remember the maker or the title for this bag. I made it so long ago. Let me show you. This is my weekender. This is what I take to all weekends. Like when I go to the greenhouse, Athena's nodding her head. Yep, this is what I do. If I go to my friend Marty's house, this is what I carry. Now, I also... Okay, I just realized I hadn't looked at anything else. All is good. Okay, I also have used this as a carry-on many times. And so this little front part right here where this pocket is, I actually cut it open one time because I needed it to be able to go onto my suitcase. Wasn't the best. I mean, literally, I chopped a hole in the bottom of it. Don't do that. But before I did this, this had nice pockets. So when I made this tote bag, same thing. It did not have a zipper. And I'm thinking, seriously, how do you take a tote bag like this on a plane without zippers? Obviously, you can't. Plus, I added a zipper here. Really simple to do using the little technique that I'll show you. And I added a zipper to the inside pocket. It didn't have a zipper on the inside pocket. And you got to have a place where you can put things on the inside with the zipper so that they're not, you know, looked at. You know what I mean. Athena's given me a face. She doesn't fly enough to know what I'm talking about. Okay, so with this bag, they did tell me to use the soft and stable, but they told me to use too much of it. It was like they wanted it on the outside, the lining, the pockets. And by the time I got to these seams that had it on the pockets and on the outside in the lining, it was so, so thick. Now, my icon could totally get through it. The quilting machine that I use totally could actually that's what I made this one with because I made it so long ago. But a normal machine would struggle mightily trying to get through all of that. So there's a couple of things that I'm going to teach you so that you won't have to deal with all that bulk. And that is in the process of making this tote bag. Okay, so let's scooch that over there. I might have to get back later. Oh, I did make this one. So this is one using some of my painted fabrics, all right? So I used, instead of one piece going around the background, I used three of my eight by 10 pieces that I paint and here too. So some of you that watch the painting videos will notice that these are the ones that I made using the peacock stencils and the new shimmer paints, all right? And this one, of course, has a shoulder strap big enough, but I did not put a zipper on this one. I'm going to show you how to put a zipper and I could add a zipper to this one now. Yes, Athena. The soft and stable is you were first talking about that and talking about how that was different than that. Are those made from the soft? And stable? Yes, these are both made because when you put this one, it doesn't flop. It stands up. It makes a tote bag so much more look store bought honestly it doesn't look like it's been as handmade um and there's some people my friend kathy at smith owen she makes the most gorgeous tote bags i just i she just really has the touch when it comes That's to that the difference between the so the soft and stable is what we're going to use the cotton flops okay and the interfacing flops too so this is what i'm going to take you through oh before i do this on the top of this i had made this this also is available at Fireside Quilts. This is the Hot Stuff Oven, and this is how it gets made up. It was really, really simple. I tried to do a video and have Athena record it, but it just didn't work right. So this is made with a silicone, and then you see how you can see your fabric through it. And so this is the fabric that I used up at the cuff. So take a look at those. Those are also available at Fireside Quilts, okay? All right, two the tote bags. You know what? I'm watching the little video here and I see this big mess of stuff down here in the video. Look at this. This is like, okay, this is all of our tripods and stuff like that. Yeah, there's got to be a place to put this stuff. I'm sorry. I've just run out of spaces. All right. Soft and stable. Ready to begin. So with the pattern, you're going to obviously cut out the pieces. And I want you to cut out all the pieces exactly like it says. But this is where we'll first make our first change. This is for the handle. They have you cut a four inch wide piece of fabric for the handle. I put a little bit of spray sizing on it so it stays stiff and then press it in half and then press it in half on the two sides, just like that. Now you are not going to add interfacing to that. 
Instead, you're going to cut a one inch strip of the soft and stable. Now, depending on how big your soft and stable is, it might not be wide enough or long enough because, you know, I like those little bit longer handle. So there's a couple of different ways that you can put it together. I'll show you another something I did. This one with this little guy, I just used a zigzag. Put it together just like that, strong as can be. Another option is to use a product that we've used before, the heat press. This is the heat press that you use to put two layers of batting together. You know how we've done that before. It's extra wide. It's got a fusible on one side. And for this, you can do the same thing. And if I use this heat press for the soft and stable, I press it on both sides. So I would press it over, then I would flip it to the other side and then press another piece. And there's a piece that I've done both sides with there too. Okay. So with this, you're going to take it, tuck it inside the fold that you've created, and then use some of your Mary Ellen's, I'm sorry, your Roxanne's glue based. And I will best put press. drops. Yes, that's not best press. This is the Roxanne's. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing. I use my Roxanne's glue. And then you can take this and fold it over. And then I use my iron. I don't have my iron down here, but I'm pretty sure you get the idea to secure that. Right? That is going to make it much easier to do the next step. The next step, let me put this out of the way, is to sew on either side. So I have sewn here, and I used a red thread, so of course you can't see it. So right here and right here. And you're going to sew that on the entire length of both of your handles. So this is one handle, and then I've got the other side on this one, and I'll show you a little bit of step on that. This fabric is the remnants of what I have of the Sue Pen fabric um, that my Learn to Quilt too, and you'll see more about that, but I think there's some of that possibly available on Fireside also. So first thing, that's the straps. Yep, the straps, that's how they tell you to do it. But what they don't tell you to do is to add a pocket to the front. I like a pocket on the front of my tote bag. And usually, just if you'll look this way, look up here a second. I didn't put it on this one, but I want to show you why. So if this is the front of my tote bag, I'm going to put a pocket on the back side so that when I am carrying it, that pocket is next to me. And that's where I might put my phone. I wouldn't put my wallet there. I'd put my wallet on the inside, but I would put my phone on that side. So if it's on the side next to you, and that's what this one is going to be. So to make a super simple pocket, the instructions have you put the straps right here. Well, why not make a pocket there first? So I just took a piece of fabric that was about an inch or so wider than what this would be. So if you put your straps down, whatever tote bag you're making, measure from about here to about here. And that's how wide you want your piece to be. And then however tall you want your pocket to be. Cut two pieces of fabric, sew them right sides together. Press, and I would press this. I do have my iron, but I think we'll just do it without it. Press that, and then do a top stitch right here. Lay that down so that it goes underneath the two straps, and bada boom, bada bing, you've got an instant pocket, right? You don't have to worry about what's happening down there because that's going to be taken care of with the next step. Okay, so that is your first super simple pocket. Oh, here's a little tip too. Instead of using, you know how I love my pins, I love my clover glass head pins, and I pick on quite often these big, huge pins. These are the pins that they call quilters pins that honestly should not be used by any quilter, but they really work well when you're doing this because this has the, you know, the thick, um, stabilizer in it and it goes in and really does a fine job of holding that in place. So I would use those when doing this. It's just going to make it a lot easier. All right. So that's one half of the front of the bag. This not too far away because I might get back to it. Right. After that, with this tote pattern, the next step is to add the bottom. So that's this piece here. 
All right. So I am going to sew this piece here. Now, this is going to be the front of my bag. I have sewn down again, leaving about two inches from the top so that you can open it and you'll be able to put your zipper in. So keep that in mind. That is how this tote bag had you work in anyway. So we are going to now go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew across this. Okay. So for sewing a tote bag, you want to use, whoops, a polyester thread. Okay. So I am using the superior soft and stable because I know and trust this thread and it's very, very strong as we do not piece with this thread, a quilt, but for tote bags, you definitely want to use a nice, strong polyester. Okay. Now I've got my machine set up. Oops. I'm going to take this off. I was working on, excuse me. I am going to adjust this so that my stitch width, boom, da boom there, oops, not one more, is going to be right in the middle. And I'm going to, I'm going to take that off. I was working on a new Bargello quilt. I'll be telling you guys soon. I'm going to work with the stitch length or the stitch width of as wide as my foot is. Now in the instructions for this tote bag, it tells you to use a quarter inch seam allowance. I really think that's a little bit narrow. And this is only about I don't know, not much bigger. And I just think it's a better size. So we're going to sew through this. When you come to, here is the strap is right in here. I want to remove the pin. And when I go over the strap, I want to make the strap strong. So I'm going to do a reverse stitch right on there. Continue on. Sorry about my hand being in your face. Here's the other strip, and again, same idea. Sew over the strap and reverse so that it's really, really strong. That's what's going to hold this together. Now, you can put straps in a lot of different configurations on totes, but in this one, that's how it has it done. Okay. Get to the end, and I still am going to use a leader, just like always. There we go, and end it. Okay, back we go. Good, good walking backwards, Athena. Okay, so this now I want to press. Okay. I'm going to reach up here and grab my iron. Okay, I'm going to press it just on top of everything. And right here, and she's looking beautiful. I love this. Again, these are fabrics from my son, my friend, Sue Penn, and it's P E N N. Um, she does have a website, I believe it's Sue Penn Designs, um, because I, this is fabric from a year or so ago, so it might not be available, but I thought that she had some on her Etsy shop. Okay, so let me put my iron back. Now I'm going to do a top stitching right here. You want to do a top stitching to secure that in place. I'm not going to show you that, but again, as I come across, I'm going to be about, oh, an eighth of an inch up here on the ledge. And then when I get here by the strap, I might do a little bit of a back stitching just to make it really strong. And then it wouldn't hurt to do an extra line so that you would end up with two lines of stitching here, kind of like on a pair of jeans, because a pair of jeans are going to have that double line of stitching to make it really strong. So that's how this tote bag is going to look. This is going to be outside of it. And you got to admit, that's just super duper cool. This is going to be the front. And then the back side, I'm going to have that extra pocket. Okay. So now we're moving to the lining on this. Oh, this is the example I wanted to show you. This is the soft and stable. It can also be called headliner fabric. And Georgia, you're the one that asked about, you had a whole bolt of, of a F117. I can't remember what you asked about, Georgia. If you could put that in the comments so that we know which one you're talking about. I believe it is this one, all right? So this is a product that has a P, it's got Trico, which is a kind of a little bit stretchy, fusible interfacing on both sides and an eighth inch foam. Now, when this first came out on the market, well, before soft and stable, it wasn't on the market. It was called headliner fabric. Headliner fabric is what you will see on the top of a car. If you put your finger, if you raise your finger up when you're in your car and you push on the head, the top of your roof, that's what is here. As if this is soft enough to protect you. But anyways, that's what it is. It's headliner 
fabric. And with if I need to make it bigger, which I did need to, just use two pieces of the heat press batting, and then you'll be able to secure that, and it's nice and strong. Okay. Yes, that's what it is. Yes, uh, one F one one seven. All right, and that I believe is a Pellon product. Um, this one's soft and stable. The soft and stable is going to be pre-cut into different sizes, and the F one one seven you would be able to buy amounts on the roller now. Okay, so this is now my my lining. This is what I attach. Oops, extra little bits of fabric. I attached my soft and stable too. So I use some of my 505 basting spray and I sprayed the, um, the soft and stable and then I put my batting, my lining down. So this is the lining and seriously, check this out. This just has a lot of little high, high heels. I just think it's a super cute fabric. Platforms and kittens and I just, okay, anyways. Here's a little thing. Here's a little trick. When you're making a tote bag and you want to make it fun because it would be boring otherwise, right? And who wants to make a boring tote bag? I always like to put a surprise inside. So I like to use a fun fabric, something that is unexpected on the inside. And so that's why I decided to use this, which is why when I'm running around buying fabric, which I probably do too much, I like to find fabrics that are fun because you never know when you're going to need them. All right. So we've got our backing and I've attached it with my 505. And here's another trick. So with a tote bag, it sure is nice to have a, a pocket. So let me grab this one. Mm -hmm. So with this one, this is the pocket. The pattern did not have a pocket in it. And that's okay because that made the pattern really simple to follow. But I want to have a pocket on the inside of my tote. Okay. So this is how you do it. Georgia asked a question. Yes, Georgia. So the stabilizer go only goes on the lining. Correct. If you put the soft and stable on the lining and the top of the tote bag, it is so thick, too thick, honestly. You could make a pillow with that. So it only goes on the lining, not on the outside of the tote. And I like it on the lining because that's also where I'm going to attach the pockets. And so that gives the pockets more stability too. So I've taken and decided how I wanted my pocket. I want it to be not all the way to the edges because I don't want that extra bulk on those seams. So I've decided to make my pocket about an inch and a half shorter than the actual tote bag body and about, I don't know, maybe nine inches deep. That's going to be a personal choice. How deep do you want it to be, right? Then you're going to use your scissors. Oh, so I cut two pieces of fabric, sewed them, started right here, Backstitch, turn, 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 backstitch, done. Okay, now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off the corners. And by making two layers on your pocket, even the front one and the, um, this one here, you're making a lining to it and you're making it stronger. So now I'm going to turn it right sides out. So here's another tip when you are turning things like this, right sides out. Now this is big enough that I don't need my special tool that I'll show you later. But use your little, I can't remember what this little guy is called. He's a HEPA or a HEMPA or something like that with this little point. I like to take and point that into the corners. Okay. And that's going to get those corners out as you go to press it okay. on all four. And then when you press it, that last one, and I usually take a little bit more time so I get that really kind of crisp. There, that one's really crisp. When you press it, and I'm not going to press it right now, but you see how, and I know you guys have all run into this, where it's, it's like going inside, right? If you will, lick your hands and then roll it so that you get that seam to the outside. So then when you press it, it stays nice and flat and you don't get that seam going on the inside. Roll it to the outside, All right? So this is my inner pocket. You know what I just realized? 
Do I gotta press this to show you what I did? Uh, I'm just gonna tell you what I did, all right? This is the opening down here. After you have pressed it, do a line of top stitch at the top of the pocket. You don't have to worry about the opening at the bottom of the pocket because after you have pressed the top of the pocket, you're gonna pin it in place and you're gonna sew it down to the lining. So the lining is here. Um, to interface the pocket is overkill. It's just not necessary. Could you? Sure you could. The problem with that is it's gonna make everything a little bit stick, stiffer too. Can you? Yes, it's not gonna hurt your bag. Do I anymore now that I know better? No, I don't. I just use two layers of fabric and it's gonna be plenty strong enough. So I hope that answered your question. Yes, a HERA marker, thank you. That's what this one is, H-E-R-A, for getting out the little points, okay? And then I'm gonna sew down the pocket, but I do like to sew a couple of smaller pockets. So let me show you what I did with the one I'm working on. So this I am working on, and this is gonna be kind of sort of a diaper bag. Um, one of my nieces is gonna have a baby in July. I'm shooting for July 20th because that's my birthday and then I'll be able to remember. So with this one, before I put the two sides together, this is the pocket, okay? So the pocket, I'm gonna sew all the way around the edges. Then I'm going to sew one line all the way down that is three inches from the edge for this tote. And that's so that it will fold nicely. And this is why. When you look at it here, all right, this particular tote has three inches from the corner to the seam. So whatever that distance is, that's where I want to sew on the um, the interfacing because it makes it fold really nice. And here's a case in point. This side folds really nice. This side does not because I failed to do that three inch seam. And you can see the difference right there. All right. So do a seam on both of the lining pieces that are is three inches from the edge. Now that is going to give you, here it is. This is the top a couple of small little um, pockets that you could put pens in, things like that, or maybe a lipstick if you put another stopper there. You wouldn't want your lipstick to go all the way down because then you'd, yeah, that would be no fun. Um, and then here, I've got two pockets, nice big size. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side of this particular purse, or to um, diaper. diaper bag, thank you, you'll see that I did put my outside pocket on it here. And then on the inside, I put one large pocket because then you could fit a diaper in there, right? So if you, you know, a little baby di uh, a disposable kind. And here you see my line of stitching. Now that line of stitching is only going through the interfacing. My pocket is only through the back. This is the lining, I'm sorry. The lining with the soft and stable that three inch line is only going through it because the next step is to attach your lining that has the stabilizer in it to the tote front. Okay. And that's going to be simple enough. You're just going to put the two sides together and sew. But this is the next trick. After you have sewn that, and did I do it on this one yet? Yep, I did, but I'll show you another time too. After I sewed that, then I trimmed the soft and stable away. So the soft and stable is stitched right there, but after I've sewn this top seam, I cut away the soft and stable so that that seam is not so bulky. So then I'm able to turn it right sides out. And this is, remember how I said the um, strap? is a couple of inches so that you can move it out of the way and you can do what you need to do. So then this needs to be pressed in place. Mm -hmm. So I've got both of them and you wanna pre-press that even though we're gonna unfold it right now, but both of them are pressed in place. Now I'm ready to put the main part 
of the tote bag together. Here's another tip. On this particular pattern, they tell you to right now cut a three inch square out of the corners of the bottom of the tote bag. You don't have to do it. I'm gonna show you an easy way to make a gusset. Okay. So I'm taking this, let me move some stuff out of the way. Uh, I don't know, maybe I got too much stuff here, maybe I don't, you know, you never know. I'm gonna lay them down, right sides together. So I've got my right side of my tote bag, the lining of my tote bag, the right side of my tote bag, the lining of my tote bag, and I'm gonna pin this in place. Now right here, I do like to make one seam go one way and one go the other way, just because standard operating procedure, it's like one of those things you do. Then I'm gonna use some of these large pins to be able to get through all of that interfacing. And one change I make in the purse, if you follow their instructions, the opening is going to be in the lining right here. But that doesn't work when you put the interfacing on the lining. So instead of making the opening be on the lining of your tote bag, instead make the opening be on the outside of the tote bag. That way the inside of the bag with the lining is all secured and you don't need to worry about, you know, trying to fold over and hand stitch with this um, soft and stable there. So instead, just put the lining on the, put the opening on the, the top part of the tote bag. I'm trying to figure what, outside of the tote bag, that's what you would call it. Athena's looking at me like, why can't you figure this word out? Okay. Do, do, do. I'm going to match up these seams here. That's the bottom of the tote. And here I can use my regular pins, although I didn't bring very many with me. Match up that seam. I do want that to match nicely. I've got that double line of stitching right there to make that bottom of the tote bag be pretty strong. But the really the, the work of the tote bag is going to be taken up by the lining and that doesn't have a pieced edge, so it's good. Right. Then this is where I'm gonna leave the opening, right here. So when I wanna leave an opening, this is where I'm gonna start, start, but I wanna leave a nice big opening. I always put two pins right here so that when I start here and I sew all the way around and I see two pins, I will remember to stop. Makes sense, right? Oh, yeah, even Athena gets that one, okay. Let's head on over here now. Even Athena, who doesn't even sew, gets that one. All right, I'm going to cut my thread off here. I am going to use the same seam allowance that I used earlier, that one that is the width of my foot, instead of the quarter-inch seam allowance that was requested with this pattern. All right, now this might take me a little bit. I'm going to go as fast as I can and still be careful going to get to the corner, maybe one more stitch, and turn. Do, do, do. This is the top of the tote bag. So this part's really simple, no big deal. It's just two layers of cotton. Just about any machine on the planet should be able to handle that. Now I'm coming up to the lining. So when you get to the lining, that's when it's going to be a little bit thicker. And the trick, this should just go slow. It's going to be sewing through the soft and stable, the lining fabric, the lining fabric, and the soft and stable. And it's just an eight inch wide piece of um, foam. So, oh, I forgot to tell you the trick. Here's the trick. Use your walking foot. Your walking foot will help you get through all of these layers. Now, my machine has a built-in walking foot. You can see it working right back there. So I don't need to put on another walking foot because I have a fat sewing machine. Get right down here to the corner. 
and turn. So with my FAF, I don't need a walking foot. I'm good to go. Now, when this is the lining of the fabric, and again, I'm reminding you that we are going to sew completely shut the lining of the tote bag. We are going to leave open the outside of the tote bag. So then the lining will already be sewed and we just have to do some slip stitch for on um, the outside of the tote bag. And that way your lining with the soft and stable is super secure. Okay. Everything's coming together just fine. Nope, that one's that one's going that way. I want this one to go this way. There, now I'm back on regular cotton. No problem. Oops. Oh, it's not stuck. It's just that the foam is big, and I don't have a lot of space behind my sewing machine. I line up my edges. Here. It's not lined up perfectly, but I'm pretty sure the tote bag will survive. Getting down here to my corner. This is the top of my tote. Oops. Okay. And look at two pins. That reminds me to stop right here. So I'm going to do a back stitch. All right. I'll cut that off and I'll meet you back at the board. All righty. So we're going to take out the pins. Obviously. Obviously. Obviously, in case you were not attuned to the obvious. Okay. Had to use even so oop, just drop that one on the floor. That's okay, there's no carpet. All right. Oh, I don't want to step on it. No, don't step on it, Athena. Are we going back to the sewing machine? All right. Now here on the corners, I'm gonna cut just like I did with the packet. So there are four corners, because this is the entire tote bag. Getting down here to the corner with the soft and stable, going to cut through that too, although we'll be cutting more of that off. I'll tell you about that later. All right. And then because the soft and stable is bulky, and I'm not going to have the time to do this all really neatly, but this is just like I sh talked about when you were putting the, the lining piece to the front of the tote bag. You want to trim away as much of the soft and stable as you can. Okay, so just like that, so that that won't be super duper bulky. Okay? Now it's going to be pretty bulky when I do this because otherwise it'll take me another five minutes at least to trim that all off. Okay, now we're going to turn it right sides out. So this is the right side without the stabilizer. This is the side with the lining with the stabilizer. I'm gonna get my thumb in there to push that corner. It's very, very bendable. I love that too. Some of the heavyweight interfacings like the Decker Bond are very, very stiff. So you want it to be very, I mean, you could bunch this up into nothing. Athena is marveled and amazed. Hi, Baton Rouge. I'll tell you what tote bag I'm using right here in a minute, Lynn. Okay. Now I'll we'll work this one through. And that's why you need it. You know, you're getting this all through the little hole. Um, so that's why you need to be sure that at the hole. Oops, that was a pin. At the hole. That would hurt me. Owie, owie. Um, that you've got the back stitching. Otherwise, you'll end up just taking out stitches. And you should be very calm when you're doing this. So I'm going to slow down. So I need to get this all the way through to the other side. And I don't want anything to rip because that would like defeat the whole purpose of showing you what I'm doing. But it does get really small. I could have left the hole a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Georgia is right. The pattern kit stabilizer everything i'm using is available on firesidequilts.com and i'll show you that particular one there now she's turned right sides out 
yeah, okay. I still did the right thing. For a minute there, I thought I forgot a step, but I did not. Like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Now, uh-oh. uh-oh. Now the lining is going to go inside the tote bag. Dun, da, da, da. That's because that's where we had to turn it. Okay, let me show you a little trick here. Got to get these poked out, even though we're going to make a change once we get that poked out. Okay, so there is the tote bag. If you just wanted a big square tote bag, do you see that? Mm -hmm. right. But we want it to be like the pattern that has the gusset on the side. Right. Now, I told you that in the pattern, they have you cut a three inch square out of the corner. You could do that. But this is how I normally do it. I turn the whole thing back again, not all the way out, but so that the I'm looking at the inside of the tote. Because I can do this on any tote bag whatsoever. Okay. So this is the lining of the tote. Fold it so now I have the corners of the bag. Now, if you're doing it this way, the lining, you are going to have a seam here, a raw edge, which might be a reason to do it the other way, like the pattern has. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up so that I've got three inches. So I measure up to be the center seam is on three. This is going here, the point is going to three. Use a marking pencil or pen. Mark my line. Do, 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 do. Now I'm going to go and sew this, and that will make my gusset. So that is an easy way to make a gusset. Now you can do in the particular pattern that we used. She told you to cut out a three inch square. That totally works too. This is just another option. I think I find it a little bit easier to get all my fabrics together, but you might want to try it one way or the other. All right, going back. So this is my little gusset that has now been created. So now when I turn it back to the front, the lining and the top of the tote, the outside of the tote, are whole, held together by that little gusset. I hope it worked because I kind of rushed through it. Yes, it worked. All right? There's my little gusset right there. Okay. And since I did with my pockets, I did that line, that straight line of stitching at three inches from the edge on both sides. It doesn't show on the outside, but it does make the tote bag actually be squarer when it's done. Now I don't have the other gusset done here, so it's not hang it's handling perfectly nicely. Now you could just leave, do you see that little gusset triangle down there? You could leave it on the inside there if you wanted to, um, or you could cut it off. You could tack it down, maybe that would be a fine idea. All right. So the, bot, the top of the tote bag, this will have a gusset on it. I'm just gonna take and close that up and whip stitch that, then it'll be all done. But we need one more part to our tote bag. We need a zipper. All right. This is so important. I just think that every tote bag needs to have a zipper. And this is how you do it. All right. I've got this really fancy zipper. I just love this. I mean, isn't that just gorgeous? Yeah. All right. This is the one that's going to go on the other one. So what I'm going to do is I measured, and this one, I made this one a little bit shorter. The idea is that you want it to be about, not all the way to the close, but I should have made this one a little bit longer. So for this tote bag, I think I measured that. Let us check. That's six is there. So I did this about 13 inches. So I cut a piece of fabric that was 14 inches by four in, no, by, that would be five and I have my seam allowance. So I cut a piece of fabric that was six inches by 14 inches, 14 inches long, and that would be the size 
that I would use if you were going to use the tote bag. So this is the tote bag, Lynn, that we were talking about. Okay. It's the tourist tote bag. Okay. Cut a piece of fabric for the zipper that is 14 by 6 inches wide. Okay. Then sew along here and here. Just leave that fold right there. It's nice to have that fold there, and I'll explain why. And then you'll be able to turn it right sides out. Now, here's a little tip for turning things right side out. I knew something fell. There it is. It's one of those tools that you may or may not have, and I don't know if Fireside has this one, but you might want to look. It's called the Turn It All Tool. Now, I purchased this back when I was making dolls, um, and I'll show you why, because this is pretty cool. It's got three sizes. Okay, I'm going to use the big size for this one because it's kind of big. And the idea here is it's just not, not, not doable. I mean, it's doable if you want to get all in there to get that open. But look at this. Put the big tube on the inside, then take the stick and push it in. And then you just turn it all. So there, now it's turned. So it's just one of those really handy tools that once you buy it, you'll find lots of different ways that you can use it when you're wanting to turn little tools or little things like that. Then I would use my Hira again to get all those edges out just like before, right? Now remember, I said that I wanted to have, I didn't want to seam all the way around because I want one edge to have, be a little bit lighter weight. This edge has four layers of fabric. This edge is a fold. So when it is turned right sides out, you're going to take on the folded edge, attach your zipper. Now this particular zipper has this really cool decorative edge. So I'm going to make it so that that decorative edge is on the outside. And I'm just with my zipper foot on my machine, I'm going to do a line of stitching right here. When it comes to the end of it, I'm going to fold that little guy over. Okay. Now, there's two different things, types of zippers you can use. For, no, nope, not that one. For this one, this big tote that I did, I used a separating zipper. And I do like that. A separating zipper, you can see that I've got, here's my little the piece of fabric that I did. Here's my zipper. And on this one, it doesn't have a decorative edge, so it's just on the underside. So a separating zipper, it's going to be like a jacket where it separates. Bada boom, bada bing, right? You're done. Or you can use a regular zipper, which is a little easier to get a hold of. And for that, here it is. I knew there was one. You want to cover the end of the zipper. Okay. So I just made a little pocket. And this is what that little pocket is going to look like. And then I used my turn it all tool again. Yeah, once you have a turn it all tool, you will use it. It just, you just got to remember you have it when you're trying to turn little guys like this. So poke him in. Sorry, went right out of camera shot. Follow me, Athena. I am. <laughs> She's like, you need to tell me what you're going to do. Then you can use your little hero tool. I don't know why it's called a hero tool. Whoops. Trying to move fast. Get those turned out. Okay. Then you can take it and tuck it, tuck the end of your zipper inside. So I'd probably use my awl, really sharp awl, which I don't have this very second, all the way in there. Okay. And then do a line of top stitching all the way around just to keep that secure. And that's going to give you a nice tab at the end of your um, zipper. All right. So we've taken our two pieces of fabric. And in this case, I put my zipper underneath it. And then did two lines of stitching. So now I have this kind of little separate zipper. Right? And I think you can probably figure out what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take that tote bag and I'm just going to attach it to it. So I'm going to attach it to the inside, just like that. Put some pins in there and it will then be attached to 
the entire tote bag. I'd probably, I'm not going to sew this, so I'm not going to put it perfectly center. But if you put this one here, keep the zipper closed as you put it to the other side. Whoops. There we go. And then you'll notice I did not do my top stitching on my tote bag yet. That's because I do that as I'm doing my zipper. So I'm going to go all the way around. Athena thought it for herself. All the way around securing the zipper and doing the top stitching all the way around. And I would do two lines of stitching. One, two. It's going to make the um, zipper more secure and it's just going to look nicer if you have two lines of stitching right there. And then look, now we have a zipper on the top of our tote bag and the tote bag opens up to the super easy pockets. Bada boom, bada bing. That's the way they say it, right? So there you go. This is the tourist tote bag from So S E W. So many creations and why they must be in New York. Um, dot com. So that's whose bag it is. The tote that is available, the kit rather that is available at Fireside Quilts is got all of the fabrics that I've used here. Now the fabrics, there's a little bit more than it actually requests on the pattern because there's enough fabric then for you to be able to do the zipper and the pockets. All right. So in for uh, the kit at Fireside Quilts, she just did a fabric kit so that you could purchase your soft and stable separate. Or if you like Georgia, happen to have a whole roll of it at home, just sitting around waiting to be used. You don't have to have that. Um, and then she's got the pattern separate too. So if you like to use your own fabrics, you could try that too with a lot of different fabrics. They, you can see here all the different colors they've chosen. There's even some on the back. I think that's it. So why haven't you I done this before? I don't know, Georgia, why? That will be the question. So let me see. Uh, soft and stable on the outside. Um, I put that, I think you're gonna wanna grandma sews brown. I, well, you're going to want to review back a little bit. I only put it on the lining because if you put it on the front and the lining, I think it's too stiff. Now, if you like doing it that way, go for it. I give you permission to do whatever you like to do. I'm not the boss of anybody. There you go. I hope that you like this. If you like this, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like this, stop watching. Um, I like comments. Go ahead and leave some nice comments. And somebody told me I didn't know this, but like if you leave comments, that like tells YouTube that we're more active and they like that. And then my algorithm goes up and I don't know, I guess that maybe we get to be seen a little bit more. So please leave a comment. I actually do like, love, or comment on every comment. So if you have comments, you can leave it below in the comment section. Um, I do have a membership. So if you're interested in keeping me on the air, you can look at the Click on the join button there and it'll tell you a little bit more about the membership. There's the $5, the $10 for learning an electric quilt and the quilt addict, which you get a new pattern. And my next new pattern will be the Bargello that I'm working on right now. Um, we should be recording that probably next month, approximately around this time. Athena, have I forgotten anything? Share with oh, please share with this with your friends. If, if you've got quilty friends and all of us do, Share the video, send it in Facebook, share it. I don't know, however it is that you share things on YouTube. Are there any other questions? No, I think only, all right. But you, thank you very much, Diane. Just refer back and watch the entire video. So go to Fireside Quilts for the kit. I really appreciate you guys watching and I hope you like the information. Have a great day.